Well, you're launching this big ad campaign at a time when there's still a lot of skepticism about whether global warming is man-made. I don't um, think there's a lot. I think well, there's, there's pretty impressive mm. people, like the vice president. He said, <laughs> well, there, we don't know what causes it. You're talking about Dick Cheney. Yeah, yeah. but others. And they say, we don't know what causes it, mm. and why spend all this money till we really, really know? I, I think that those uh, people are in such a tiny, tiny minority now uh, with their point of view. They're almost like the ones who still believe that the moon landing was staged in a movie lot in Arizona, uh, and those who believe the earth is, is flat. That demeans them a little bit, but it's not that far off. And I've got an article from October 8th, New York Times Magazine, about a firm called Kleiner Perkins, a capital firm called Kleiner Perkins. Are you aware of that company? <laughs> well, yes, I'm a partner in Kleiner Perkins. So you're a partner in Kleiner Perkins. Okay. Now, they have invested <laughs> about a billion dollars in 40 companies that are going to benefit from cap-and-trade legislation. So is the legislation that we are discussing here today, is that something that you are going to personally benefit from? I believe that the transition to a green economy is good for our economy and good for all of us. And I have invested in it, but every penny that I have made I have put right into a nonprofit, the Alliance for Climate Protection, to spread awareness of why we have to take on this challenge. And Congresswoman, if you're, if you believe that the reason I have been working on this issue for 30 years is because of greed, you don't know me. My next guest wants to sue Al Gore for fraud. He hopes a legal challenge will settle the global warming debate once and for all. He's John Coleman, and he founded the Weather Channel. My favorite channel has some of the hottest women there. And now he works as a weatherman for KUSI-TV in San Diego. He knows warm fronts like I know cold cuts. So, John, why do you want to sue Al Gore? Well, the deal is this, Greg. We have tried and tried and tried to get a debate on global warming mm -hmm. with scientists on the other side. Al Gore or any of the uh, scientists behind him over at the UN IPCC, mm -hmm. we'd love to have a debate with him, but they say, oh no, the debate is over. Yeah. Well, now there are 30,000 of us. Mm -hmm. We have 30,000 scientists, 9,000 PhDs, who have signed up to debunk global warming, mm -hmm. and uh, they still won't listen to us. A British judge may ban Al Gore's film, An Inconvenient Truth, from schools. He says it's unfit for schools because it's politically biased and contains scientific inaccuracies and sentimental mush. The case stems from a father who accused the government of brainwashing kids with propaganda by showing Gore's film in the classroom. Schools may have to issue a warning before they show students the controversial movie about global warming. Finally, finally. <laughs> Somebody so, come. You, so you don't agree? Oh, there are definitely some inaccuracies. And, you know, the Oscars, they give out awards for fictional films as well. Well, the biggest thing I have a problem with is his, his implication that Katrina was caused by global warming. And there's a number of studies that have been out, and they're really the jury is still out. Global warming does not conclusively cause stronger hurricanes like we've seen. You know, to, to think that we could affect weather all that much is, is, is pretty arrogant. The Mother Nature is so big. The world is so big. The, the oceans are so big. I think we're going to die from a lack of fresh water, or we're going to die from ocean acidification before we die from global warming, for sure. But this is like, you know, you said, in your career. My career has been 22 years long. That's a, a good career in TV. But in, in talking about climate, it's like having a car for three days and say, this is a great car. Well, yeah, it was for three days, but maybe in day five, six, and seven, it won't be so good. And that's what we're doing here. We have 100 years' worth of data, not millions of years that the world's been around. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jay, we've been around uh, just a little over four, by 
scientific estimates, of about four and a half billion uh, years. Uh, what is what is your thought about the dominant influence on weather? Uh, well, clearly, clearly, Lou, it is the sun. But if we go back in re really recorded human history, in the 13th century, we were probably seven degrees Fahrenheit warmer than we are now, and it was a very prosperous time for mankind. If we go back to the Revolutionary War 300 years ago, it was very, very cold. We've been warming out of that cold spell from the Revolutionary War period, and now we're back into a cooling cycle. The last 10 years have been quite cool, and uh, right now I think we're going into cooling rather than warming, and that should be a much greater concern for uh, humankind. But all we can do is adapt. It is the sun that uh, does it, not man. Hackers have tried to prove global warming researchers are massaging the figures after stealing sensitive emails from one of the UK's leading climate research centres. The documents were then made available to the public from a Russian server. A potentially major scandal is unfolding after someone released thousands of emails and documents sent between prominent scientists of global warming debate. The New York Times has verified that these emails are legitimate, which wasn't too hard because some of them were written by and to one of their reporters. On the same day Al Gore received his share of the Nobel Prize for his work on climate change, one of his main arguments is being challenged by a scientific fact. Gore has said that the northern polar ice cap could be completely gone in as little as seven years. But Brazil's Metzl Weather Center reports the ice and snow cover in the Arctic have recovered to within 1% of normal, even though the official start of winter is still more than a week away. And it says the southern polar ice cap gradually actually has an additional 772,000 square miles of ice now compared to a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, uh, we, we can't get on the air. If it weren't for the internet, you wouldn't even know I existed. Yeah, no, that's so, true. Uh, the, the whole deal is that somehow we have to be heard. So yeah. we figure maybe a court of law.